Hi guys, it's Ray here from Man City Fan TV. Well, final whistle's just gone at uh, St James's Park and despite scoring uh, after 24 seconds and uh, Newcastle hardly having a shot in the first half, we've gone and got beat 2-1. And to say I'm disappointed uh, would be an understatement. I mean, that, that, that was a poor uh, performance. Really, really poor performance. Um, I mean, there's plenty of uh, negative adjectives you could use. I mean, we... We lacked urgency. We showed no urgency, no real urgency until um, after you know after we'd scored, and probably nothing until we were two one down. And even then, it, it it didn't really make much difference. And it wasn't as urgent as you'd expect for a team fighting for the league title, losing two one. Twenty minutes to go. We will you know when Newcastle scored their second goal. Twenty minutes to go, and you'd think that we would you know throw everything at Newcastle, and we just didn't. We just wimped out of this game. You know. These are my opinions. This is my feeling. It felt sloppy. It felt slow. It felt stodgy. And it felt like we just turned up in Newcastle. Yeah, we're just, you know, we're the Billy Big Bollocks. We're just going to turn up and we're going to walk this game without putting the effort in. And sorry, lads, I feel you've, you've got to earn it. You've got to earn it. You know, it was unbelievable the, the number of times we uh, overhit passes or we. Our players couldn't control the ball. We made poor decisions. I mean, uh, you know, Kevin De Bruyne putting a, a late tackle in, or even if he's trying to get out of it, once he's already on a yellow card, and so that he had to be um, substituted, taken off. And you know, he's one of our you know best players. <sighs> scratching my head. I mean, I think Pop is uh, sorry, Pep is scratching his bald head as well tonight because you know you could not see this performance coming. I and mean, it's unbelievable. I'm. Ah, torn up inside I mean Pep if you looked at him every time they were cutting to Pep in the first half it looked like a guy who was frustrated frustrated at the ways his players were performing because that was not a Pep team really I mean the, the poor performances were all over the pitch and um, it's really frustrating because we were there, we were playing before Liverpool, we should have been putting the pressure on Liverpool, um, we should have been getting the three points, however we could do it, we should have got the three points tonight, be one point behind Liverpool and then let them play under pressure tomorrow. Now, they can go tomorrow and relax a lot, a lot more than they probably would have done if we were one point behind. Now, you know, they can pull up a seven point lead and don't get me wrong, there's still plenty of uh, games to go and we've come back from further behind. But, you know, to throw in that performance, it was abject, it was abysmal, it was poor. I mean, you can put your own uh, stronger objectives in if you want, but it was not the performance of champions, okay? We sh as I said, we should have put Liverpool under pressure and we failed to do so. I mean, I'll try and recap some of the game, um, but, you know, I'm really disappointed. Um, we had a great start, a wonderful start after 30 seconds with Sergio Aguero scoring. I mean, New, Newcastle's, uh, you th you'd have thought their game plan was right out, out of the window. I mean, it started with them, they had the kickoff, pumped it down, uh, they had four men up front, and um, they were just trying to win that long ball by having four men up, because whenever, it's very unlikely they're going to have that many men up unless they've got a free kick or a corner or something uh, in, you know, during the game. So they had the men up, we won the ball. It was a beautiful volley pass from, uh, I think from uh, David Silva to Raheem Sterling. He, he went uh, down the line, I got across the far post. I think David Silva was put a very brave header in, headed it across the goal and Sergio Aguero was there to hook it home. Uh, it, was, it was a very, very well taken goal. And you'd have thought, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, you'd have thought, City would, would have used that um, to, to build upon, you know, that's the base to build upon and really go at Newcastle. And, you know, I've said it for a, a few times in, in the recent games, you know, we've kind of got into a lull, we've taken our foot off the pedal uh, when we really should be hammering it home. I mean, Newcastle had very, very few opportunities during that game and I really think we should have been really going for them to, to get that second goal. That second goal would have pretty much put that game to bed because Newcastle were not going to get that many chances and we were giving them, in, in effect, we ended up giving them the chances. I mean, looking at other, I mean, I'm, I made some notes during the game and it's, there's a lot of, you know, notes about poor passing, you know, six minutes, poor crossfield uh, pass from uh, Emeric Laporte of all people um, 
And you could see Pep was furious after six minutes asking Moy, waving his hands up and up, asking for more from the team. You look at uh, 12 minutes, Danilo, he took a big risk and he, he, he gave the ball away. He got lucky with it. I mean, I, you don't know what, you know, you, what people are doing trying to take people on when you're the last or second to last man and you've got two or three other defenders or a midfield to pass to. Why? I just don't understand why you're doing it. You know, 17 minutes, a very contentious uh, moment in the game. But I'm not going to blame the ref because if, that, if the rules are rules, you play by the rules. Now, there was a tackle on um, Raheem Sterling by Richie. It was a late tackle. I mean, I, I personally thought it deserved a, a yellow card. Um, but we didn't get that. And the referee told Kevin De Bruyne, showed him his whistle. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm going to have a go at the ref here as well, even though Kevin deserved his yellow card by, by apparently by the letter of the law. The ref showed him the whistle. You've got to play, wait till I blow the whistle before you take the free kick. Kev actually took uh, an early free kick before the ref had blown his whistle. And Agu um, Aguero came uh, in into the box and scored a beautiful goal. It was fantastic. I mean, he was, the, I think, the only player in the box and about six or seven Newcastle players were there. But the ref came uh, and gave KDB um, a yellow card for taking that free kick before he'd blown the whistle. Now, to give a free kick, uh, sorry, to give a yellow card for something like that and not to give a yellow card for the actual late tackle on, uh, by Richie on Sterling, you know, I, I think, in my opinion, the, the sometimes you're giving yellow cards far too easily when a late tackle, which in my opinion deserves more, gets nothing. Now. I still don't understand why the referee had to come across to Kevin De Bruyne, stand over the free kick, sh show him the whistle. Why couldn't he just got into a, a good position to start with and let uh, KDB take the free, uh, free kick? If a Newcastle a player comes to a block it, just give him a yellow card. It really is something that annoys me when you've got a, a team's got a free kick and players come and stand over the free kick and block it and take 10 seconds to actually move. And um, personally, I just, you know, whether it's City, uh, the suffering from this or City, the perpetrators, just give them a yellow card. I want the game to flow. I want the game to keep going. And just give them a booking and you'll see suddenly how quick this will stop. I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking through uh, some of my notes again and, you know, Danilo, I think, had a poor game and, I've, you know, in the last few games, we've been praising him and saying how good he's been with his passing and his shooting and everything else. And he made a few, um, you know, sloppy, er sloppy errors early on. And, I think that kind of went through all, through all, all the team, you know, about on 22 minutes, they cut across to Pep again and he looked really frustrated, you know, and it, at that point, it, well, City were well off the gas, you know, and if you get not on the gas, other teams, they start to get into the game and they start to feel that, you know, maybe we can get something. I mean, Newcastle in the first half were just defending 5-4-1, pretty poor, you know, uh, going up, uh, attacking, but once you're off the gas once you're not pressing them, once you're not on, you know, you should, we're 1-0 up, Newcastle are not a great team, certainly not a great attacking team, we should have had our foot on their jugular, on their neck, all through that game, okay, and we just didn't do it, we let them off the hook, you know, looking through my notes again, poor play on 32 minutes, um, at the back from Newcastle, and Aguero put Sani through, but, you know, the the, the, the chance was lost, he got uh, uh, snuffled out, uh, snaffled up, whatever, um, 35 minutes, Dino um, crossfeed ball to Walker, to Sterling, but then he got crowded out. And Walker again, um, he's making too many mistakes. He's hanging on the ball for a little bit too long. He doesn't know where his feet are. I mean, I made about four or five notes because I was watching him in particular because, I, and I, you know, after the pod I did with uh, Walter Smith and uh, Mike Long last night, you know, Walter was saying, you know, maybe Pep is going to look for somebody else because unless Walker books up his ideas, and this has been a very, quite frankly, poor season for Walker. So, you know, I was really focused on him to see how he'd do because I, I did a, um, a, a player transfer uh, video today about a, a fellow from um, Nice called Yusuf Atal, who's very exciting prospect. And, and he's only 22 years old and, you know, there's, there's rumours that City are interested in him. So Walker's under pressure, you know, whether he's lacking confidence or whatever, you can't go around making as many mistakes as you're making and expect to be a first choice in, in the team. Um, I mean, oh, every, I know, I, I made some notes at our time. Every single time they looked at Pep, he looked frustrated, he looked disappointed, he looked distraught, you know, and, and as the second half went on, after uh, Newcastle had scored two goals, he looked pretty much resigned. Um, what else can we say? You know, Newcastle's two goals. 
Okay, Ro 65 minutes, okay, it was that uh, Rondon's gone. I mean, just before that, KDB had to come off because he'd been booked for that um, uh, free kick um, issue in the first half and he made a slightly late tackle on, on Richie and, you know, Newcastle players were there trying to get him sent off, get another booking, get off the pitch. Um, but as soon as that happened, um, you know, Pep had to take uh, uh, KDB off because he was just one slightly late tackle away from being sent off. So Bernardo came on for him. J I've got to, I'll say this before I talk about Rondon's goal. Jermaine Genius, disgusting. So, I mean, they're always talking about money and Jermaine Genius comes and talks about financial doping. Please, do me a favour, get lost, Jermaine. You know, it's cheap cracks at City. I'm sick and tired of it. It's easy. It's, you know, think of something new and original, mate. You know, just these cliches, these... It's just a waste of time. It just gets me go after a while that, you know, these pundits are getting paid to say crap like that. You know, it's all news, mate. Move on. So, 65 minutes, Rondon scored. I mean, the ball got put into the mixer. I think it was a poor header out. Um, and when it got knocked back in, I mean, Rondon, no one really went for the ball. There was a lot of poor play from City. You know, people just standing there watching it. There should have been somebody really willing to put the neck on the line. I personally, you know, I'd have to see um, that goal uh, two or three more times just to see, but I thought a couple of players could really have put their head in the danger zone where Rondon was having a shot. You know, maybe you get kicked in the head, so what? You know, you want to win the league title, you've got to put your body on the line. Someone, I think, should have really busted gut to try and get to that ball before Rondon. And it was, uh, I think, sloppy all right. It was just, again and again, it's the same thing. So it's one all. I mean, to be honest, at that point, you think, yes, okay, City have got the quality. And that's what we've been relying on recently. You know, um, sometimes we, we, we go through these games where we rely on a few minutes of supreme quality play that gets us a, a goal or two and, get, and puts the game to bed. So, you know, 72 minutes, uh, Sani comes on. No, so, sorry, Sani comes off and uh, Jesus comes on. So we want a goal. I mean, Jesus is in red hot form, 10 goals in six games. And, you know, going through my notes again, 73 minutes, Walker messes up again. And it, on 77 minutes, Dino makes that foul for the penalty. And he just didn't know the player was there. He just turned around into the Newcastle player and uh, didn't take much of a touch. The guy went down easy, but hey, you know, a foul's a foul. It, it looked like a foul, so I don't think anybody really complained about it. I think Edison tried to waste some time saying he was injured, trying to put Richie off. But Richie, he wasn't there to be put off and he absolutely leathered the ball under Edison and uh, it was 2-1. So, you know, we bring uh, Gundogan on for uh, Danilo, we take him off. Um, and at 84 minutes, another escape for Walker Moore, uh, poor control. And, it, you know, that kind of summed it up for us. I mean, what can you say? I mean, I'm, uh, you, you can probably tell, I'm really bitterly disappointed. It's not the kind of performance that you want to put in if you that you, you put in if you want to win the league. Now we've lost um, four games this season, and uh, let's be honest, the performances haven't been good enough in those games we've lost. And um, you know, as I said earlier, we've come back from um, more points behind with fewer games to go before. But you know, this Liverpool team are looking quite relentless, quite ruthless. Um, and uh, giving them that opportunity to, to pull up a seven-point lead tomorrow night against Leicester. I mean, they can go and draw that game and, you know, they'll be disappointed if they draw, but they'll still be five points ahead. We've you know, thrown away a great opportunity. And looking at Pep's face at the end, you know, it was a look of resignation on his face. It's like, guys, how could you blow this opportunity? How could you mess this up? We've got so many other games to go, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be really tough to now pick up these players and get them ready for Arsenal because that was pretty much, you know, almost the best team we could put on that pitch. I mean, who else, would, you know, there's only Mendy that wasn't available. That was pretty much the best team we could put on that pitch and you'd have expected them to have enough about them uh, to have that energy, to have that urgency and, and to actually want it and it was like they didn't want it and that's, Probably the most disappointing thing for me, that lack of urgency and that lack of really wanting it. And, and, and Newcastle got that belief and you could feel it at the end. They really wanted it. And, and City, we ran out of ideas. We didn't know what to do. <sighs> do we go again? We've got no choice. We've got to 
you know, rely on the fact that Arsenal are very, very poor defensively. But believe you and me, we put another performance like that in again this season. We can forget our uh, dreams of winning the title. We made it really, really tough for ourselves um, to come back from this. You know, we've really got to turn it around on at the weekend against Arsenal, rely on their poor defence. We've really got to step up. You know, will some players be dropped? I think, you know, uh, you could see a couple of players be, uh, be dropped from this performance. But, I mean, you know, can you look at anybody uh, from, from our team tonight who played well? It's, it's a really tough, tough ask. Poor, poor performance. Uh, and I'll say it again, I'm bitterly disappointed. You know, um, kudos to all the City fans who managed to go uh, up there. I, I think a couple of days ago I said I'd have loved to have gone, but I had a hospital appointment today, and uh, you know, uh, sometimes you just can't go. But I'm bitterly, bitterly disappointed. Um, we've got to pick ourselves up for this Arsenal game. Fingers crossed we can, you know, forget about Liverpool. We can only do what we can do, we can only look after ourselves. And at the end of the day, I said this before if Liverpool win the league, they'll have, they'll have deserved it, you know. We, losing four games, that's a lot of ga uh, games to lose. We, you know, I said we. But at the start of the season, we'd get 90 to 95 points, and I still um, stand by that. Uh, but it feels like it's going to be nearer to the, you know, the lower end of that range, nearer to 90 than 95. Um, but let's see how it goes, and uh, fingers crossed, the boys can pick it up and uh, we can get a win on uh, Sunday. See you around, Blues.